So many states around the country have been offering subsidies, basically, if you're willing to build new EV charging infrastructure, but of course there's a lot of strings attached. You cannot just build regular old Tesla superchargers. It has to be using a charger network that can be accessible to all. So it basically it means the CCS connections. And Tesla applied for these charger subsidies in Texas and bizarrely was not granted those awards, despite Tesla moving their headquarters there and Elon seemingly being in good terms with the governor and everything, but ironically, even though he has had less good things to say about California, Tesla has actually won several million dollars worth of grants from the California Energy Commission's Clean Transportation Program Rural Electric Vehicle Charging Project. Just rolls off the tongue so easily. But the crazy thing about this is that it means Tesla may be building one of the largest fast charging CCS stations in the country because apparently there's several sites across I-5 that they're going to be applying for and in order to get this grant money from the state they're going to need to ensure that at least 50 percent of those charge stalls some of those stations rocking 160 stalls total will be ccs compatible and thanks to patents tesla has filed in the past most are pretty sure they're going to be moving forward with this leaked magic dock adapter that we've yet to see in the real world but essentially what it should mean is that every supercharger has the regular tesla connector if you're charging your tesla as well is the regular CCS connector so that you can charge whatever other EV that you're parking there. What's hilarious about this to me is that Electrify America is basically what everyone's been relying on for your non-Tesla charging and it has been quite a whirlwind of a charging network. So many people complaining. I mean, just watch the all-electric family, watch Kyle from Out of Spec, Out of Spec Dave as well. Both of them will tell you how frustrating and how annoying it's been to have so many Electrify America stations broken down or they say they're supposed to be working or not charging at their advertised speed or having to constantly move spaces and what killed me even further was I guess Electrify America reached out to Kyle and told him to stop posting about his negative experiences because they weren't helping anything and another guy Brandon was also asked by Electrify America to stop complaining about their charge stations publicly it's like guys if you don't want people complaining about your charging network then make the network right don't reach out to people specifically telling them to stop complain like people are going to share their experiences, whether they like it or not, and you cannot expect every EV owner that has an audience to sign some special NDA to not complain about the charging network. Plus, that's just straight up dishonesty. If they're reviewing an EV and they like a lot of things about it, but then they find out that the charging network it relies on is no good, they should be able to share that information, and that should be able to influence the customer's buying decision. So I've been watching this nightmare of a charging system unfold and seeing how irresponsible Responsibly, Electrify America has been handling the situation and how slow they've been to upgrade the chargers and fix them and improve uptime. And I just keep thinking that more companies need to work on expanding the charge network, not just Tesla and their supercharging network, but now seeing Tesla apply for these grants and we know Elon has said they have no intentions on keeping superchargers exclusive to Tesla, just like they're opening them up in Europe. They want to open them up in the United States as well. It's possible that Tesla Tesla might actually start to build a larger, more reliable, and more stable CCS charge network than Electrify America does, because clearly the supercharger network is just so widespread, and I'm sure it has its issues, but I just have to say from my own personal experience, it was insanely reliable. Never once did I pull into a station and had to move out of my parking space. Never once did I get routed to a supercharger that was so busy I had to wait in line, and I never plugged into one and then had a charging issue and had to unplug and plug back in again. Tesla is just really, really good at reliability. You know, they don't have the fastest charging speeds in the world. If you can find a working Electrify America station, you can get charge speeds much faster than superchargers. But ultimately, I think if people had to choose between a slower, like 150 kilowatt charger versus a dead charger where only a couple stalls were working, but hey, those stalls charge at 350 kilowatts. Yeah, you know, especially when a lot of the most popular EVs don't even charge over 150 kilowatts, whether it be the Mustang Mach-E or the VW ID4. Having more and more fairly fast chargers that are just reliable and that can keep working even under peak demand and when they're being used a lot, that's ultimately I think what matters to the end consumer the most and I'm very happy that Tesla wants to start rolling out this magic dock and applying for these grants that states are putting out there to help motivate companies to actually build out these chargers to make them reliable and keep working. But it's also a great highlight on how the opening of the supercharging network is going to 
to unfold. I don't think it's as simple as many people are assuming. I know a lot of people out there that are like, oh, well, Tesla says they're going to open up the supercharger network soon. And while, yeah, I think they technically want to, I'm not sure it's going to be like you can suddenly now charge any EV at any supercharger. I'm more convinced that it's going to be this slow, gradual rollout of the magic dock where new superchargers that are being deployed have CCS connectors. And maybe they start retrofitting some old superchargers with magic docks, but I don't think that means every single one. I don't think that necessarily means that Tesla is going to sell consumers an adapter so that you can just take that to any supercharger you want. I think to help not overwhelm the network, because there's clearly a lot of places where Teslas are waiting in line and there's not enough superchargers, so that's why a lot of Tesla owners are concerned. Like, don't open up the charging network yet. You can't even service your own customers. Why do you want to take on more customers? So I think Tesla's logic to avoid that is just deploy new stations that are in more desolate rural areas like these places off of i5 and apply lots of chargers so that there's no wait times there's definitely not going to be a line at least anytime soon with a 160 charger location that way there's plenty of room for everybody to charge including your id4s and your chevy bolts and the places that are packed with teslas all the time will continue to be exclusive to teslas but i just think there's a false expectation out there that oh don't worry in the future tesla superchargers will charge any ev that rollout is not going to be as simple as possible i think tesla is going to be kind of starting from the ground up again with new ccs locations and tesla does grow fast and they have shown how quickly they can ramp up production of their charger stalls and how quickly they can grow their network so they may have a more reliable and more proven network than electrify america within a few years ignoring just the tesla side of the business but for any ev charging but i think it proves a lot about how tesla has their heart and their mind in the right place on everybody needs to get on board and frankly with the insane backlog of demand tesla has i don't think they mind if they're handing out some bones to their competition and making it a little bit easier for their competitors because some people don't want to buy teslas and i'm comfortable accepting that and i'm not one of those people that thinks tesla is going to be the only company making cars in the future you know i love the company i love this vehicle i very much enjoyed driving it and i'm a big fan of the brand but i absolutely understand why some people don't like the company being too emphasizing on software some people like more traditional designs or some people like more buttons and dials some people just don't like the tesla stigma that's associated with the brand i love the stigma personally but i'm totally in favor of there being options and there being competition that's actually competitive that gives tesla incentive to try harder in the future so the fact that tesla is also willing to accept that competition and actually help them out because i feel like not enough of these other companies whether it be ford vw or hyundai are trying hard enough with developing their own charging networks tesla realizes they can and should help them so that was a cool story that i didn't see enough people talking about so i wanted to share it for you today and get your guys's thoughts in the comments as well and i also wanted to apologize for the lack of content last week it was super busy for me over on talos of tech and i got very very sick i'm still not completely recovered yet so i had to take a lot of last week off on this channel and the whole weekend was a complete nightmare for me so i'm coming out of the sickness strong but i still have a lot of exciting topics that i wanted to cover for you guys and i'm just slowly working my way back into it but i just wanted to say thank you so much for sticking around and being patient with me as well as supporting us over on patreon it really helps us out a ton as does just watching these videos so thanks again you guys and i hope you have an excellent rest of your day take care